And uh, another question on here from Mr. Kim. Um, yes, uh, John, if you want to check in, um, I know my little local AT&T store here um, has a really cool uh, router that you buy. It's about $110, $105, something like that. And uh, it works with Comcast and worth uh, obviously AT&T and you plug it in the back uh, into your ethernet uh, network. And if for some reason your network goes down, you're, you're no longer to get, able to get internet, uh, it goes to cellular, they charge you $25 a month for the data on it is, is what at and is advertising for it. So um, pretty easy. Uh, Dan's asking about QuickBooks integration. Um, you know, Dan, I, I love you, man. This is version one. <laughs> Literally released tomorrow, buddy. Um, there's only so many things we could put on there. Uh, it's really good. Integration is one of the things we're seriously looking at, and and it, it is on the agenda, but it is not available today. No, it's well done. I I appreciate what this is. So. No, man, I appreciate the question, but you know, I I love all the people that ask me about. Well, is KDS available today? It we have a lot of things coming. Um, and, and I love all the questions, but not everything's here in version one. <laughs> it's coming quickly. Um, so piece of cake. All right, Jeff, I found the copy. You go into the new new item, add a new item, and here's where it says choose the item that you want to copy from. There you go. Thank you very much, I, Jerry. Yeah, there it is. And then, then that just fills in the gap on everything except the name. So, so there you go, guys. Is. Hey, Jerry, can you show them how to split a check um, on the iPad? I, I see you still have your yep. iPad there in the background. Do you see it? Is it I still, still see your iPad there in the background. Um, can you show okay. them how the split check works in the settlement screen? Yeah, uh, I'm going to do it a couple of ways. You right. can, of course, ring up items. I'm going to ring up three items. And you'll see those three on the screen above. On the far left, you see there, that is the number one or seat one. It's awful small, but it, that's what it says there. So if I want to add a guess at this point, I'm going to hit the blue person at the top here. And now I have two seats, seat one and seat two. I touch the item on the left, and now I designate that as seat two. I designate that as seat two. I can add additional items by choosing what seat I'm going to ring up for. Right now I'm on seat two. So whatever I ring up is going to be for seat two. If I ring up now and choose seat one, whatever I ring up goes on to seat one. So that's how you would designate. And on my screen, I can see the iPad screen and it is clear to me that that's seat one and seat two. When I get ready to pay for this, you have a choice of how you would like to split. Since I rang it up by seat, I'm going to choose split by seat. And there you have the two seats now split apart. I can choose which one that I want to cash out. Now that order is set, uh, seat is settled. It says so on the ticket window. And go here and settle that as well. So that's how you split a seat even before you've rang up how many people are sitting at the table. It's a matter of that little blue button at the top where you add another guest. Now, I have mine set up for table service that when I ring up and start a new order, it asks me how many seats are at the table. So if I were to say four, then the system would already know that I have four people sitting at the table. I would not have to do that. That is actually adding on the fly. Did that, did that properly show that? Did that get your answer? Uh, can you actually go into the settlement screen though and do the split? Yeah. Um, I've got two seats. I'm going to designate that as seat two, the other one is seat one. Go to the settlement screen and then hit split by seat. Yeah. So boom, right there. And now they At can the bottom, it says print current or print all. So that's where you would print the guest check to hand to the customer. So piece of cake. 
um, I have a um, how do updates work? Uh, just like all iPad updates, they're downloaded from the App Store. Uh, it depends on how you configure your iPad. Do you auto update when the update hits, or do you require manual updates? Um, I'm a big fan of the auto updates, and so my iPad just automatically updates within about 24 hours of the the change being added to the App Store. Uh, because anybody that has an iPad, you realize iPads update constantly. Um, and if you've got more than one app on your iPad, you know you're probably running into multiple per week. So uh, I let mine automatically update, saves me time, saves me headaches. Uh, but otherwise, they can go to the App Store on their iPad and hit updates. And it'll give them a list of updates, and they just simply click on which ones they want to download, or they hit download all. Um, so it's the typical Apple updates. I'm actually, I'm going to change to a different uh, configuration. So I had somebody uh, will, uh, how will we integrate with online ordering? We'll let you know when it's finished. That's uh, yeah. that's the smart aleck answer, um, but no, it this is still version one, um, so it's it's coming. So, can our support connect to iPads um, for support? The cool thing is, we can do even better than connect to your iPads. We can connect to your cloud. Um, so if there's a setting that's not working, if there's something that's going on, we can make the change on the cloud um, and make the change there. There's no reason to connect to the iPads. Uh, Apple does unfortunately restrict iPad access. And so if you've ever tried to use log me in or VNC on an iPad, you'll realize it really doesn't work. Um, you can't interact with the desktop and things there. Uh, the other thing is there's really only about two things that ever go wrong with the iPad, uh, from my experience with any app I've ever put on, and they're all solved the same way. Uh, you delete the app and re-download it. Um, that solves just about everything. I've had some mapping programs go bad on me. Uh, I have some accounting programs for my bank and things like that that have, uh, for some reason, stopped working or something like that. You delete it and reinstall it from the cloud, and boom, that solves everything. I chose this particular store because we have programmed them some really nice pictures for the background. So you don't have to use the standard background image. You can choose your own customized image. You also have the ability to force a size modifier here. And you'll notice the little red salt and, salt and pepper shaker. What that means is there's choices. And if you touch those, you can go back and make choices, changes to those choices. So mod go back to the modifier and make those changes. That's how you change before you send it to the kitchen. Tell you what. You have to hear you typing away, bud. Well, I have uh, Mr. Gilson uh, asking if we can set the price based on order type, and absolutely, you'll find when you go into the extended price settings, uh, it'll ask you, you know, uh, dine-in price, takeout price, delivery price, all of that. Um, it's also where you'll find is this an opened item or uh, open price item. You just switch from yes to no. No little secret codes you need to know or anything like that. You just hit the little toggle and it makes an open priced item. So I'm trying to keep up with everybody's questions here. Any other questions we have? Well, when, Jeff, when you I make have changes, 
yeah, when you make changes on the uh, on on the on the store, uh, how quickly does it uh, show up on the iPad? You have to hit sync first. When you log in, when you fin complete an order for the item, when you settle a ticket, um, when you clock in and out, um, any of about another probably thirty places, it will sync all of that data. Oh. And the sync takes milliseconds um, to do in most cases. So it is literally one of those things you won't notice happening in the background. Um, if you make a large number of changes, let's say um, you're, you're just whacking away and, and let's say you're changing 50 items and the iPads are in use, most likely as they're in use, they've been picking up, you know, one or two or three or four changes along the way as they've been being used. So they're not picking up a ton, but let's say you actually turn them off. Uh, so they're not downloading, you made 50 changes. The first time you log in, you'll see it'll say sync, and it'll take maybe a two seconds, and it'll be done. Hmm. Um, okay, that's great. So it's how, pretty um, and it works that, really good. How hard is it to uh, set up like uh, pizzas with all the different toppings? It's exactly the same as it is in Odello for restaurants. Okay. <laughs> It, it, I, I mean, that is the actual answer. It's exactly the same. Um, the, if you've done it, I'll do it for restaurants. When you come in here, you'll see there's a section that says pizza set up in the back office. And you literally go down and create sizes, crusts, sauces, toppings, items, and you're done. It's the same exact steps. Does it also have the ability to have, like, different uh, pricing on as far as, like, a half pizza versus a whole pizza? Absolutely. This is a real POS system, guys. <laughs> it really is. We've been in development now for almost two years. And Jeff, how many people do we have working on this? Uh, about 25 right at the moment. So not including QA people. So that's another eight. We've been in the field live since June of 2017. Mm-hmm. 